This is a hopefully quick crash course on Alio Rose time. I am by no means an expert at all, but uh, I've learned a couple of things when using it over the past year that I thought I would share. So without further ado, um, this is as of March 2018, this is the latest version of Rose time 1.0.0.49. Um, if you know of any tips or tricks or better ways to do things, please, by all means, uh, chime in, add a comment or something, and probably recommend you checking the comments to see if there are any corrections that people have offered up. But feel free to contribute. I would certainly appreciate it. So anyway, here's the splash screen of roast time. Uh, let's start down here in the settings section. This is where you know the settings are not very robust in here but you have a couple good options. This gets asked all the time, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, and your units. We've got the file location. You can change your default. This is where you're going to find all of your roast profiles. On the visuals, most of these are self-explanatory, but one I do wanna kind of point out is the fixed time graph. If you're not roasting with overlays, this can be really, really helpful because it's it's very difficult to get an idea of your curve if the, the time axis is changing, as is the default. So I typically roast with an overlay or a playback, but that's totally up to you. But keep in mind, you can lock it here, and then you can kind of get a, a good idea of how you're doing on your roast. And with time, that, that'll be more familiar with you. Um, we got a couple other things, line width, grids, I mean, you can play around with those. I, I believe this is completely default. I don't think I've changed anything in here. Of course, you have your updates for software. I believe it's all automatic at this point. We got about and debug. With that, let's just continue on here. We got the info pane. Uh, this, I don't find this particularly useful while roasting, but some people like it and probably more for troubleshooting purposes. You can toggle that on and off by clicking info pane. Uh, clear graph does just that. If you perhaps you've plugged in your roaster and it's going off and you wanna, you know, it's been preheating for 20 minutes, you wanna clear it, you can clear it like that. Um, if you wanna open up a particular profile, you can do so here. This will open up a JSON file. And as I mentioned before, you've got mine are stored in documents. Alio, and then I've got all my JSONs here, which is the same as the roasts within here. So <clears throat> over here, you have some basic information about your roast. You can toggle through. Let me find a less embarrassing roast. Something like that. So It'll tell you all the goodies about your roast that you opted to put in at the time. Um, down here, we've got the, the power and the fan and the drum. So you can kind of see how that progressed throughout this roast. You can also toggle on and off the events. This one was, oh, here we go. So you can toggle the events on and off which can kind of be useful if you're just trying, you know, so you don't have to hover your mouse over and try to figure out where exactly you changed something. Or if you're sharing on Facebook, that can be kind of cool. Um, you can also toggle off on and off the bean line, the drum temperature and the rate of rise, depending on what's important to you. Now, guess with that we can we can if we have a roast that we particularly like, we can play it back and that will basically autopilot mode for your roaster. Uh, you can turn on an overlay if you'd like. And then whenever you start roasting, this, this graph would be superimposed. So you'd have a live line along with this in the background. So you can see how your roast, your current roast compares to this previous uh, benchmark roast. I use overlays a lot. I find them very helpful. You, of course, can edit the profile and you can come in here and change your bean or, you know, weight or something if you mess something up. Uh, and then actions. 
are one of my favorite features. So I actually have a couple of Rose profiles. Um, shout out to Werby from Facebook. This was one of his, and I find it great. So, well, let's let's show like from from scratch. So let's say edit actions. And this is where you can basically tell your roaster to do, you set a trigger for an action. And I like to start with a clean slate. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these. So what you would want to do is pick, okay, do I, do I care about a time trigger or a temperature trigger? So for example, let's say when you first start the roast, you want it to uh, set the power to zero, for example, to have like a soak period. Well, I would start with a time action. So I click the plus sign to add that. And then I would set my power, my, well, my time to zero, my power to power zero. And then I can say, okay, well now, whenever my rate of rise uh, becomes positive, I wanna change it to P9. So my trigger for that would be a temperature-based action. That would be my rate of rise. So I could add in a temperature-based action and I can say, look at the rate of rise when it's greater than, let's, for this example, let's say zero. And then I want to change the power to P9. So hopefully you get the idea. So this, this is super powerful. So you can, uh, oh, changed on me. Yeah, it's not without its little quirks, but then you could continue to build this up. Uh, let's say at, you know, 155 or so, you wanted to change the power to P8 and so forth. This is exactly how you can do that. Um, you can also change the opacity here. If you're wanting to maybe use a reference roast in the background and see how you did your wonderful roast, that's kind of useful. You give it a name and save it. Now you can go to that this Werby 700 gram one <clears throat> is one that I put together. It's not my idea, but I put it together in the edit actions. And now I can select that, click playback. I, and whether or not you want to overlay your, pro, your profile. Once you press OK, it'll be off to the races. And these triggers will, you can see each line represents a trigger. P8 at 150, F2 at 160. You can see in here, it kind of gives you a little bit of detail in there. So that's actions. They're great. Um, then you also have the analyze feature, which is super powerful. If you want to completely nerd out on your data, I don't use this very often, but sometimes, you know, if you're curious, you can, you can do cool stuff. Like, uh, you can define the two axes, 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 these, and, um, you can look at the relationship between them. So for an example, let's say the first crack start time versus the first crack temperature. Now let's say we wanted to maybe filter by um, my Colombian beans that I've roasted. Let's apply that and we can analyze all profiles. So up here you see it's plotted all the Columbia profiles that I've had for Colombian beans, and we have the first crack start temperature on this axis, first crack start time. So you can see how, I mean, the options are kind of endless. I don't know if this is a particularly useful metric for you, but you can kind of get creative with it. You can also come in here and say set scale to default, and it'll kind of zoom to your data points, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, that's a great tool to have. You can also select a couple, you know, maybe there's uh, maybe you don't want all of your Columbia's, but you want, uh, you know, this chunk, you can highlight those, plot it, set it to scale. You can also save an image. If you, if you're posting to Facebook, it's a great tool. Save image as you don't have to do screenshots. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So we got through playback, overlay, edit profile, edit actions, analyze. Folders where you can change that default uh, save directory, wherever you like. Then finally, on the roast pane, 
it will give you the total time of your roast, the temperature of your bean, the temperature of your drum, your rate of rise, drum speed, power, RPM, all that good stuff. You can mark your yellowing first crack and second crack on your graph, which are these indicators here. You have your legend over here. So what I find really useful to do is, um, well, you can turn these, again, you can turn these on and off, bean, drum, rate of rise. If you don't understand what the rate of rise means, I highly recommend you do a little bit of research and reading on that. So this graph, this blue line here, is basically the slope of the temperature of your bean. And it took me a little bit of time to figure out what exactly that meant in a real roasting scenario. But once I did, it was very, very helpful. So I highly recommend if that's if you're still confused by that, do a little bit more reading. There's lots of resources out there. Um, <clears throat> but everyone's different. Everyone likes their own different profiles. So feel free to experiment. Um, you do have some shortcuts on your roaster uh, for first crack and second crack. I believe it's F1 and F2. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. And then um, you can also do back-to-back -back roasting uh, when, by hitting F1 whenever you finish your batch. Um, with that, I think that's the basics here of roast time. Hopefully this helps somebody out. If you got questions or if you have cool tricks, sure. Thanks.